talking out of my ass. Number nine. Ah, uh, let's talk about expected value. I lightly brushed on the sub, uh, you know, brushed on the subject uh, about a week ago. I'm just gonna double it on the warrant to it. Uh, so what happens if you have an investment to make to get your uh, to be uh, to make a to get your winnings or your profit? Let's take, the, let's take, there's something in Illinois called pick three plus fireball. And they got a pick three, just a regular, right? Now here's a situation. What do you do? You, you have the option of playing a dollar and you pick three numbers and you win $500, right? That, it's the, that's the pick three straight. You have to match all the numbers in, in order in the exact same order that the numbers are picked. All right? Then, there's the other option. You play $2 and you win uh, $1,250. $1,250. And that's with plus fireball. And then what the plus fireball is, it's actually you pick three numbers and then you pick an extra number on the side so you can like use it as a as a wild card. You can swap it out. So for example, say you pick five five five, right? And then uh, the the numbers come up five five nine. Now say say at the fireball, the other ball on the side, say that's a five. You could swap that five out for that nine, and you'd win. You'd win the five hundred bucks, right? But then here's an interesting conundrum, or an interesting situation that they proposed, or that they that they set up. What if you do five, 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 and then the plus fireball is five? They say you can swap out that five, that plus fireball five, for any of those three fives in your original numbers, and you win $250. So, the example, five, 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 the plus fireball, the fireball is five. You win $500 for the five, 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 and then and then for each of those three numbers, you swatch out, you, you you swap out that extra five on the side, the fireball, for for each of those numbers. So you win 250, 250, 250. So you end up winning one thousand two hundred fifty dollars because five hundred plus seven fifty, the two fifty plus the two fifty, plus the two fifty, three two fifties, seven fifty plus five hundred, twelve hundred fifty bucks. Right. So what do you do? Play you paid you do you do you do you, do you, do you play two two bucks for twelve hundred fifty bucks or you pay one dollar for five hundred bucks? See the thing about the pick three, there's actually a negative expectation value of, of forty nine cents. So that means over the long run of playing pick three, you lose forty nine cents every time you play. Over the I mean not every time, but over the course of the fucking whatever fifty years of playing pick three. Yeah, you'd expect to lose about 49 cents. So it's negative 49 cents expected value. But the, 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 but the pick three plus the fireball, if you if you go five, 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 and the plus fireball is five, the fireball is five, you win 1,250 bucks. And the expectation value, or the, expect, uh, the, the expected value for that is, uh, is uh, 76 cents. So over the course of fucking 20 years of playing pick three plus fireball, you'd win... 76 cents you have a positive expected value of 76 cents so there the math says you pick the two dollars for the 12.50 and how do you figure that out i got this from a website i forgot the name it's smh some some university santa fe new mexico educate or uh edu or uh santa fe new mexico uh, university i don't know what it fucking was right well anyways what you do is you take, um, say, your initial um, your initial bet, two dollars, right? Okay, then then you're expected or your what you want to win, twelve hundred fifty dollars, right? Okay, so I worked out the the, the math for the twelve fifty. It's like um, I don't know. I think it's like point zero zero three. 
uh, times 0 0.003 times 0 0.03 times 0 0.001. Because the odds to pick, the odds to pick the, the, the pick three are one in a thousand. Are one in a thousand, right? And the odds to pick the fucking the, the fireball, the pick three plus the fireball, we can swap out the numbers, three in one thousand. So it's like 0 0.003 times 0 0.003 times 0 0.003 times 0 0.001 times 1250 then you subtract from the fucking uh, from the probability that you're going to lose so you have a point nine nine seven chance of losing which is like close to almost 100% right and you multiply that by your initial bet two bucks and if you do the math that comes out to 76 cents positive 76 cents so like I'll do a simpler example for the math. Okay, let's do a uh, pick three, just a regular. You win 500 bucks, right? Your odds of picking the pick three, one in a thousand. That reduces, that one in a thousand can be trans, can be, uh, can be, can be converted to a decimal, it's point zero zero one, right? So point zero zero one times uh, 500 is uh 50 right it's 50 cents right 0. 0.50 right subtract that from from your uh the odds of you not winning times your original bet the odds of you not winning the, the pick three are 0. 0.999 multiply that by one it's like like a little less than one i don't know it's something like one right What's 50, what's your, what's your, what's your 50 cents minus your one? That's a negative 50 cents. That's how you figure out the negative 50 cents. That's how, that's your, that's your expect, expect, your expected value over the course of 20 years of playing pick three. Negative 50 cents. So I, I don't know, I don't know if I, any more real world examples, um, I don't know, uh, let's see, uh, uh, say if you're driving somewhere, right, it costs you $10, right, it's for a job, right, you expect to make uh, $60,000, right, and say you got another uh, option, you go to, a, you, you, can, you can either, you only have time for one interview, right, I, I brought up this situation last week, but this is a little more ex a little more uh, extensive or a little more uh, complicated. Say, okay, so you got like a 10% chance of getting like a, a $90,000 a year job, right? But you have to spend $10 of gas to get there, right? And then the other fucking uh, job, it's $45,000, but you got a 90% chance of getting it. And you have to spend, uh, say, 20 bucks on gas to get there. Which do you choose? I mean, you can't quantify time, really. I mean, you, you, I mean, you know, you know, what I'm saying the only thing you can quantify is the uh, the gas that you put into going to the job, right? For the interview, right? So it's ten dollars times. No, I, I sorry about that. It's it's fucking. It's what I say, forty five thousand times like ninety percent is like uh, 40,000 or um, is uh, yeah 40,500 I think let me see 360 I think it's 40,500 right multiply that by 90% I mean that's that actually that's that's a 90% so 40,500 deduct that from the chance that you won't get the job the 10% Subtract ten percent times twenty bucks. Ten percent times twenty bucks is uh. What the fuck is that? Uh, it's point two bucks. Two bucks. So you have 
40500 minus $2. You get the $2 from the probability that you won't get it, the 10%, times your initial investment of the gas, 10 bucks. That's how you get the two bucks, right? You get the fucking, you get the 40,500, the probability that you get the job times your, uh, times your uh, potential winnings, your potential earnings, which is 45,000. That, 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 uh, that multiplies out to 40,500. 40,500 minus two, two bucks. It's 40,000. Uh, 498 40498 so that's that's your expected value for that investment of your gas to go out to this job interview and like I said you can only take one interview you only got time for one interview right for a job what about our other example you're at 10% to get a $90,000 a year job and you're and you're uh, the gas it costs you costs like I said 10 bucks so let's figure it out you take your potential earnings, 90,000, times 10%. That's 900. Or no, that's, um, what is that? Let's see, 10% times 90,000. It's uh, 0 0.1. That's 9,000 bucks. Sorry about that. So 9,000 times, or sorry, sorry, minus, minus, the probability that you won't get it, the 90%, multiply that by your initial investment of 10 bucks, which is nine bucks. So that's nine dollars. So that's nine dollars, the 10% times 90%, the probability that you won't get it, and uh, that's your one part of the equation, you got to think of it like half, you know, the, the, the minus or the plus, that's like, that's like the half, it's halved in between, you go, probability that you won't, that the probability that you won't, that you'll get the fucking prize, multiplied by the prize, Minus the probability that you won't get the prize, multiplied by your original bet, your your investment or whatever. So here we go back to our fucking example. We got the nine thousand, which comes from your potential earnings, your potential winnings or whatever potential yearly income, multiplied by the the chance that you'll get it, which is ten percent. That reduces that that multiplies out to nine thousand. Minus, which is the dividing the borderline between the, the two halves of the equation. Minus the probability that you won't get it, which is nine, which is uh, ninety percent, times your initial investment of ten dollars worth of gas, which is when that and that 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 uh, ninety percent times the ten dollars worth of gas, that reduces out to uh, nine bucks. So nine thousand minus nine bucks. It's like uh, eight, uh, eight, nine, nine, eight, nine, one. dollars. So, which do we go to? Which do you go to? You only have two options. The $90,000 a year job or the $45,000 a year job? You go to the $45,000 a year job, your expected value out of that is like uh, $40,000, almost $500, and your fucking expected value out of the $90,000 job is like uh, close to $9,000. There, that's how, you, that's how you figure out your life decisions. Ah. <clears throat> Oh, let me think of something else. I got wrote a bunch of shit down. Oh yeah, the fucking. Uh, I'm just rehashing old shit, but I get. I feel like I gotta like explain it more. For my last fucking uh, my last uh, talking out of my ass. Um, I want to talk about the conversation. How do you, how do you conversate? How do you make conversation with women, especially on the first date? 
I brought up yes and that concept. Like you take something that, that that they're saying, and not only do you fucking agree with it and you play along with it, but you take it to a heightened level. Say they're at a level one, you take what they're doing, you make it a level two. I mean, eventually that scene's gonna play out. You'll talk about something else, like I said before. But you know, of course, you know, like any other, any you know. They, they can they're gonna figure that out eventually you keep on saying oh yeah i agree with that yeah sure you know so you want to mix it up with some questions or maybe you know or, or maybe 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 you know, maybe you contradict them a little bit but then you go right back into the positive the conversation the the, the, the yes anding them you know mix it up because like you know say you're on a poker table you're playing texas hold'em right you keep getting like ace queen right and then the flop comes up you know, the flop keeps coming up like aces like you get an ace, ace nine eight in the flop, right? Say you keep getting those aces. Say you keep, say you keep getting dealt like an ace, ace king or ace nine or ace five, and you keep getting an ace on the flop. You don't keep flop. You don't keep like you know over betting the pot. They're eventually gonna figure it out that you whenever whenever you got an ace that you're gonna over bet the pot. So you mix it up. You slow play them a little bit. Maybe you wait till a king pops up on the turn. Or maybe you fucking, uh, you, you know, you make them, uh, you know, you, you just slow play it a little bit. You check, man. Or maybe you check raise on them. <coughs> you don't keep over... <coughs> you don't keep over betting the pot if the aces keep coming up because they're going to figure it out. Exactly. With the same thing with the women. They're going to eventually figure out that you're, that you're fucking yes handing them. They're, gonna, they're not going to know the exact technical term for what you're fucking doing. But they'll figure it out eventually. You know your pattern or whatever, so you mix it up with some questions. <clears throat> and maybe, maybe you might, you might contradict them a little bit, just a little bit. Say you're going like ninety percent yes and, you go maybe five percent questions. The other five percent, uh, you contradict them a little bit, just so they don't figure you out. You know what I'm saying? Again, this is just to like. I mean, if you look at life as scenes, which it pretty is, I mean, you know how people say, well, I can write a movie about this, right? I mean, that's what it basically is. Your life is comprised of scenes, right? I mean, you know, from improv class, I, I you know, the well, number one thing I fucking learned is that, uh, you know, any contradiction of the fucking, the, your, the, your partner in the, in the scene, that pretty much ends this fucking scene. And you don't want to end the scene when, with a girl you're trying to get your dick into, right? You want to keep fucking playing along and then heighten it. And like I said, it'll it'll run its course, that fucking scene. And you go on to the next topic of conversation. Of course, this is all just to get pussy, right? You know, maybe, maybe, with your, maybe you're with a fucking a bitch like five years fucking and uh, you're still yes and him and shit. I don't know. I don't know how long you should take that shit, but... Uh, or how far you, you you should take it? I don't know when you, when do you when do you stop yes anding like after a year, after a month, after you got your dick in them for the first time, maybe you want some more pussy. You fucking you still yes and them. Maybe the bitch doesn't even give a fuck that you're yes anding me. She'll fucking she'll spread her legs for you any fucking ways. <clears throat> so you know, like I said, uh, that's a big thing in improv. Don't ask questions. Yes and them. Of course, they would never let you contradict your partner. You would have to constantly yes and them. But I'm just saying, in real life, you know, eventually you, you kind of disagree. Like I said, 5% of the time you disagree, 5% of the time you ask questions. The other 90% of the time you're yes and them. Just like a good poker player would always mix up his fucking plays and his bets, you know, if he keeps hitting his hand, you know. So what else? I got. I went through expected value. Look at my fucking notes here. I wrote some shit down. Fucking. Here we go. Yeah. Damn! I talked about everything I read on my fucking notes. Unbelievable. Um, let's see, what else can I fucking talk about? Mm. 
guess I like to talk about strength training too. And I miss it and shit, you know. Uh, the only thing is keeping from me, keep me from it, is a uh, little bit of pain, you know. Like I said, I kind of fucked myself up, you know, because I didn't have the fuck. I didn't, you know, I wasn't compensating for the the different limb length, my my leg, my leg length, my leg length in differences, or my leg length differences. Like one leg is longer than the other by about an inch. The right leg's longer by about an inch. I didn't compensate for that. So here I am, you know, picking up like, you know, 425 pound deadlift, squatting like fucking 300 pounds, whatever, you know, like here I am with the fucking lopsided body. One leg's longer than the fucking other. You know, that, that shit'll put like stress on one side of your body. Whatever has a longer leg, that's where your stress will come from. You, you, you'll feel more like, you'll get, you'll get more bent up on that side, on your longer leg side. So, you know, that's kind of stopped me. I kind of fucked my body up doing that a little bit. But like I said, I, I, I learned how to compensate it for it. I bought one of them Dr. Scholl's. Like one of them Dr. Scholl's gel inserts. It's about, a, I don't know, quarter inch thick. That seems to help me as far as my leg length. Leg length. Leg length differences. Uh, let's see, what else? I don't know. I see so many guys, man. Like fucking George Lehman, man. That guy, man. You know, his girlfriend broke up with him after two years. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I don't know. When my girlfriend broke up with me, I was pretty broken up. I was a little bitch, you know? Um... Yeah, I was a little bitch. My girlfriend broke up with me. But I went back right back into finding a new girlfriend. I went back to finding a girlfriend, you know. I didn't let nothing stop me. She was telling me, uh... She was telling me shit like, uh, I don't care if you fuck other women. Go right ahead. So I fuck, you know. That's exactly what I fucking did. Yeah. And, uh... That's just the way it works, man. You know, women expect the honor out of us. Like, like some women do. Like, they expect you to fucking be all honorable since they broke up with you and not fucking, not go with, go fuck other women after they broke up with you. But, you know, fuck that shit. You broke up with me, I'll go fuck whoever the fuck I feel like. Whatever, fuck that shit, man. Fuck being honorable about anything with these women, man. What, you, you, you think they're going to be fucking honorable with you about any fucking thing? You got to sit there and be all fucking honorable about shit? Fuck that shit, man. I don't know. I got to go start lifting weights again. <clears throat> I'm really fucking fragile right now. God, I haven't lifted weights in almost a fucking year. And here I am fucking... I'm paying for a membership. For To a gym. It's not that fucking much, but... Still, I'm fucking low on money and shit. Here I am paying out for a membership and shit at a gym that I never go to. Whatever. Yeah, you know, I just feel like, um, I don't know, I miss the weights. Definitely miss the weights. I'm afraid that, you know, here I am, 43 years old. I'm not lifting weights, you know. I feel like I'm going to start, like, you know, if I fall down, am I, am I going to break my fucking hip or some shit, you know? Plus, I miss the psycho. The psycho in me when I start lifting weights. You start fucking... This is what I heard from Joel Rogan's podcast that when you start lifting weights, your endocrine system, your endocrine system starts, you know, pumping out hormones like fucking crazy, like the testosterone and shit. They're, your body thinks that, uh, oh shit, I guess I gotta pump out some testosterone and build this, mu build this motherfucker some muscle and shit. Doing some heavy compound, you know, movements like squats and deadlifts, bench presses and shit. You know, plus I want to get some, I want to, you know, I never figured out how to get good at the, at how to increase my strength at the bench press, really. I was doing, like, dead presses. You know, those were all right, but they weren't perfect. See, the problem is, you know, when you're doing bench press, your front deltoids get fucking beat up big time. Your front deltoids, and those fucking, whatever those ligaments that are fucking connecting the fucking, 
the deltoids to the front of your shoulders and shit. All that shit gets fucking beat to hell, right, when you're doing fucking bench press. Now, a person on steroids will continue doing bench press three times a fucking week. But since you're not on roids, you got to mix it up. You got to change the angle of the fucking shoulder joint, the front deltoids. You still fucking work out that muscle and shit, but you put it at a different angle. I was thinking, like, overhead press, but still, that, that doesn't really hit the fucking pecs and the deltoids and the tries. It hits the triceps, but not so much it not so much the fucking pecs. It hits the upper pecs. But still, when you're fucking bench pressing, it hits the upper pecs, the, the middle part of the pecs. It hits the front deltoids. The shoulder press, it hits the fucking... I don't know what I don't know the, the I don't know, I think it's the top delt the anterior delt I'm not even sure the, I think it's anterior deltoids fuck I don't know what the fuck it is whatever those deltoids on the top of your fucking shoulders it hits those right but it doesn't really hit the front deltoids it totally misses that shit so that's what you gotta be con be concentrated on is your when you're when you're trying to get good at your bench press you're trying to hit those three fucking muscle groups front deltoids front pectorals. The, the fucking mid pectoral and the triceps and the forearm and the wrist to a, to a smaller extent so I was thinking since I'm not on roids I don't heal as quick as guys on roids that I would do dead press on one day and then fucking uh, I know I hate smith machines I talk a lot of shit about smith machines but that's, that's the only way to do a front that's, only, that's the only way to do a bench press with the uh, that with the weight that you can actually get underneath, and you can use one hand because the fucking bar is stabilizing the machine. You know the bars and wobb wobbling or fucking around. You ever try to do like a one handed bench press? It's damn near fucking impossible. So I was thinking Smith machine. The only thing I'm worried about is there's fucking there's really no fucking uh, tension on the negative movement on the downward movement. You only get the tension when you're pushing upwards away from your chest. So I was thinking one-handed fucking uh, Smith Machine bench press. I don't know, maybe I do that dead. I mean, because the problem with the Smith Machine, you really can't, you don't have any crossbars to fucking, uh, to catch the bar if you fail. The only thing you have is those little fucking tabs, those metal fucking, they're not tabs, but they're kind of like tabs. You swing out, you put it underneath like at a certain stop, stopping point. Uh, for the bar to for the bar to rest on, if you fucking uh, if you fail, if you miss the rep, you have those to fucking uh, catch the bar. But still, they they don't exactly you know uh, they don't exactly rest. You can't exactly rest the bar on your fucking chest. You have to have like little like quarter inch above your fucking chest, or you're not gonna get under. You're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get stuck underneath that fucking thing. And if you put it too fucking low, those those tabs, those fucking catches, or whatever those fuck those safety catches. For the bar to rest on, if you put it too low, it's gonna fucking have to crush in your fucking chest. You're gonna be stuck underneath that fucking bar. And that's what made, that's the main point of my fucking training program. My training sessions are. I, I miss a lot. You know, I, I count like uh, fucking like, you know, going up quarter a, a quarter of the way as a fucking gain. Because I mean, if you look at the bench press, it's actually it's actually um, two movements. It's actually, the, when the bar first comes off your fucking chest, you're not using triceps and shit. You can, you can test this out on a fucking, uh, on a fucking uh, cable pull-down tricep machine. Try to fucking use your triceps. Try to do a tricep push-down with a cable machine with your triceps, with your, with your fucking forearms, touching all the way to your bicep. Try to, touch your, try to touch your wrist to your bicep, both wrists to the bicep, and try to do a, a, a tricep push-down. And see how fucking strong you are. You can't do it. But if you fucking somehow extend the fucking forearm and make like a 90 degree angle with you at your elbow, from the forearm to the fucking tricep, to the back of the arm, you'll be able to push that fucking weight down. You'll be able to do tricep push down. So what does that fucking tell you? There's no tricep involvement when you got your fucking, when the bar is resting on your chest, on the bench press. None of it whatsoever. It's all front deltoid. And to a, and to a, and and and, uh, and there's uh, pectoral muscles involved. And then as you slowly come up to about midway, when you reach that fucking 90 degree angle in your fucking arm, 
with both arms, then it starts becoming more tricep, less pectoral, and less front deltoid. So, like I said, I'm going to try a one, one-handed uh, Smith Machine bench press. Dead press? I don't fucking know. I, I usually do dead press because I hate fucking unracking the fucking that fixed bar off those fucking hooks off the Smith Machine. There's something about it, about twisting my wrist and then setting myself up, my wrists up and shit to get the fucking, you know, get in position with my hands and shit. I know it's a fucking Planet Fitness fucking bullshit machine, Smith Machines, but... I'm thinking, you know, there is some fucking use to those, you know, one arm movements. When I was working out at Planet Fitness, I was doing like one leg dip, one one handed deadlifts. There's no way you can do one handed deadlift with about 200 pounds. I mean, I've seen people do it. <clears throat> I've seen people do it, but still, they practice on that for fucking uh, probably years and shit, try to get that fucking shit, you know, level and shit. And you really have no control over a one hand, one arm deadlift or one handed deadlift, none whatsoever. It's all wobbly and shit. Even if you do find the middle of that fucking bar, it's still gonna be fucking wobbly. The Smith machine, you can do one arm deadlifts, you can do one handed deadlifts, you can do one legged deadlifts quite easily. Only problem is you don't fucking get that fucking, you don't feel any tension on the fucking on the way down. It's all tension, you know. Moving the, moving the bar against gravity and shit. That's the only part, that's the only place where you get the tension when you move the bar against the gravity. Against gravity, not dug gravity. Uh, well, that's enough talking shit out of my fucking asshole. Good luck.